this is Catherine, aka Wooly Faye, and I'm going to show you how to do the crab stitch or what is also known as the reversed single crochet. Now this stitch can feel a little bit awkward if you're not used to doing it. It can feel awkward if you are used to doing it because you're going in the opposite direction. So you come across from your right to your left when you're doing your stitches. I have about 25 single crochet stitches here. And then when you come back across the opposite way, of course, you're just going in reverse. So it's a bit like walking backwards or trying to use your left hand when you're right-handed. There's just an, a natural feel to that, but it has a really nice effect, especially for borders or if you're cry, trying to create ridges in your work to separate different sections. So what you want to do for this stitch, basically, is you want to go ahead and establish a single crochet stitch. And the first thing that we're going to do on this, we're going to show you two different ways to do it. And the first one I'm going to show you is going up under the front loop. When you work under the front loop, then of course you leave the back loop available to work out of. If you're in the middle of a project, you can still work out of this back loop if you need to. It also has a completely different look than working under both loops. So we're going to go ahead and do that one first. And it can feel a little odd. So I'm going to show you the mechanics. But beyond that, try not to overthink it. Okay. Just if you're experienced especially um, and you've, you know, struggled with this um, stitch, remember that just do the mechanics of it. Don't, don't overthink it too much. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under this front loop here. Just the front. There we go. Got it. And I'm going to keep all of the other work, all the other stitches behind the hook. Okay. So I yarn over and I pull up a loop and say I just complete a regular single crochet. So that feels quite natural to me because at that point we're just doing a single crochet. But then again, we have to move backwards again. And that's the unnatural part. So stick your hook into the next stitch going backwards. And then make sure all of that work is behind that hook. And you're only working the front loop on these. Remember that. So you're going to yarn over and drop another loop. And then complete the single crochet. Now don't think too much about the fact that it looks like it's just hanging off like floppy skin or something. Just, just um, don't think about it. Just go ahead and complete that. Keep it as the same tension as best you can as you would normally work. Remember that the hook needs to come over the top of this. So when you go into that hook, try to avoid going this way and pulling it in. You are going to end up in, instead with a struggle not to do a um, the slip stitch and, or just a big mess. So you want to go in to that front loop and keep that hook over the top right there. And then draw it through like that and complete the single crochet. And at that point, once you've done that, it should feel quite natural. Don't think about it. Just do it. Now, that looks like that's pulling this way. When you do like that, it should kind of line back up. But because we're working in the opposite direction, we do kind of get that um, illusion of it pulling. It's actually going to all straighten out just fine, as you can see. So let's just go on to the next one. Just do a bunch of these. And remember, I'm keeping that hook over the top of the work. I'm coming into the front loop, hook over the top of the other work, yarn over, and just complete a single crochet as usual. All right? And that should make it quite easy. As long as you don't overthink it, just follow those mechanics. Just follow the mechanics of it. And it all should work out quite well. And try to maintain that tension again. I know I already said that. But this is what it's going to look like, okay? It'll look something like this when you do it that way. So that's a really nice look if you want to, you know, put something in the center that's got a bit of a ridge. And then you want to be able to go back again and pull up these back loops and work out of these back loops. You can do that. So... Um, you can you can come back and I'm going to do this real quick. Now it's going to be odd because if you're on the edge of, of the work and you come back then it, it goes a lot smoother. But as you can see you can just come in here then and pull these up and either do a slip stitch or a single crochet. And you can do a extended single crochet if you want a taller stitch. Okay. And so then you can just continue as usual. So um like that see so you've got this little ridge here 
and it's a real nice it's also good for borders so let's go back and look at the other way you can do this real quick and this is equally as tricky tricky it takes a minute to get the feel for this one as well you want to go ahead and make sure i'm not going to be piling on here you want to go ahead now and put in your single crochet stitch like i told you before now we're working in reverse again only this time what we're going to do is go in through the entire stitch so we're going to go front to back now that's going to create a very different look so when you go into the front loop you get one loop if you go through both loops you get a completely different look so i'm just going to pull this through i've got two loops and i'm going to complete that single crochet uh, again under both loops and what is happening now is it's creating a kind of a twist okay so i'm just going to slow it down and remember even experienced crocheters do need to kind of slow their pace on this just very um relaxed that you do this you know just do it at your leisure not that you can't move along a little more quickly than i am I'm not saying that but you don't want to to just get um, reckless with it. You want to just make sure that the pace that you're moving um, is still producing a, a good result. So here we are, okay? And this will, by the way, this will loosen as you work if you're continuing, unless you put it on your edge, it will tend to loosen up a bit. It still have a really nice look, but it, but you want to keep that tension as normal as possibly on these. And don't worry too much about trying to control how it looks. Some stitches, um, but overall you'll get a really nice effect. Some stitches will just look different, um, a little bit looser. You don't, you don't want to vary too much on the tension, but at the same time, don't want to stress over it. Okay, so as you can see, when I move along, I'm just sticking it in under both loops, pulling up, and just going along. This is the effect I'm getting. But what happens when you do that, and now this is going to create a kind of a funky look when I go in behind it, um, because um, we're not on the end, so we're not going to be working back evenly across. We're going to have to be twisting this yarn back around. So do know that's going to have a funny look on the end here, but we're going to just get right to it. Um... Uh, when you get to the back, of course, there is no back loop to work out of because we've gone under both. So usually this is going to be really good if you want a, this effect on the border. But what you can do if you're wanting that rounded ridge in the center is you can work in to the post. Now we're going to have to avoid this one because we're not working out the edge here. We're working right in the center. So it's going to create a kind of a funny look. So I'm going to just move it all over. Let's see how far can I go without messing it up. Okay. Is that going to be awkward? No, we got it. And you can slip stitch. And I would I would advise slip stitching, okay? So we've done that one. Let's move to the next one. There we go. I have a tendency to get off here. Sorry. So I'm pulling it around the post, as you can see. And then I'm slip stitching. Next post. Coming in. I'm going back. And it's really hard. I'm sitting here concentrating, trying to show you and missing little steps. So basically what you're doing, okay, is you're going up in front of the post and then you're going back behind it. So you're basically doing a back post single crochet, I mean, slip stitch on these. Again, up and then to the back again, around the post. And then I just like to do a slip stitch. Because what you can do when you're done, I'll show you just a second here. We're going to go ahead real quickly and just move right along. In case you're interested. And those actually will work in real easy. See? Real easy those will work in. Watch. Whoop. I said that. And then lost my yarn. Okay. There we go. Let's go back in. Boy. I say that and then... The universe says, oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. My yarn is uh, not loose here. There we go. See, that should have just slipped right through, but because I spoke the evil, I said, oh, get her. I am silly, by the way, most of the time. Okay, 
So I finished that. I've slip stitched around each one of those posts. Like I said, I was going to get on with it. And what that does is that draws that up a bit. So you can see it exaggerates it and it draws it up so that it stands up more. Now let's just say I want to come back here and I want to put another stitch on it. And I'm going to use a, a, a extended double crochet, I mean single crochet stitch instead of a regular uh, single crochet because I want to show you how that's going to look when you when you get those stitches up built up. So I'm going to go up under both of those loops on that slip stitch and I'm just going to do an extended single crochet. go and I could see if I did just enough in here to give you a good example notice I didn't go all the way across the row with it there we go. Now I'm going to turn this back around just so you can see. And now we have a ridge right in the middle of our work. Okay, see how that looks? And then of course we can continue on. So that is how you do the craft stitch or the reverse single crochet and the way that it looks depends greatly on the method that you use to do it. And you can do all kinds of neat stuff with it from borders to ridges, um, high or low, round or flat. So pretty cool nifty stitch.